What is up, everybody? My name is Reese Thompson. I'm a full-time chess teacher and candidate master. We are playing another 10-minute rapid chess game. If you look over there, my rating is 2337. I'm playing um, my opponent, 2370 from Austria. We do have to play quickly here. <laughs> um, it is a 10-minute chess game. We're going to go ahead and play the King's Indian. And let's see how my opponent reacts to this opening. I like playing the King's Indian. And my opponent plays the London variation. Okay, let's play Bishop G7. And let's go ahead and castle my king. Let's see what happens in this game. My opponent puts the knight on D2. So very, very solid setup for my opponent. And it can be oftentimes really hard to break down the solid structure in the London system. I'm going to try today to do that. Let's start with a move like um, knight bd7, and then we're going to probably go for this plan of um, pushing this pawn over. You know, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, there might have been certain position here after c3. I could have gone knight h5. Let's look at that after. Sometimes if you can capture this bishop by kicking it around the board, um, we might be good there. I need to double check if I had an option to do that. And let's just go for my plan of playing b6. Oftentimes you go e5 in these positions, but sometimes you can also go for this plan of fianchettoing your bishop. So let's go ahead and do this. And at a certain point, I want to play a move like queen e8 and e5 here. So I'm just trying to think about if this is the appropriate time to do it. Or maybe if we should just play for a move like knight to e4 here. This is also extremely natural. Um, let's go ahead and do this because this also opens the pathway for my bishop to control this e5 spot. Normally in the King's Indian, we're going to be playing for the e5 central break. And this knight to e4 move often makes sense with a bishop on b7. So we're going to capture. And oftentimes we will probably have to run away in this position. Okay, so he goes a4, maybe trying to gain some space on this side of the board. I do know that this is an idea. I could play a5 to avoid this move if I wanted to, you know, stop my opponent's plan on the side of the board. e5 is going to be the main source, but I'm just going to go ahead and stop this play on the side of the board, and then we can kind of continue my plan later on. I had an important game where, you know, my bishop's on b7. With this a5 move in, he can't really trade these light square bishops off, which is can be useful. Okay, let's go e5. Put some pressure on my opponent. Attack that bishop. We have this pawn on e5 defended three times, so we can actually get away with this. I do need to be careful that d5 is not a good move, but generally I can get away with having this knight on a very nice square on c5. But I do need to be careful that this isn't something that could be very, very good here. So like queen e7, d5, maybe just knight c5, and I think I'm okay there. Kind of hard to tell. I don't want to play a passive move like bishop b7, but maybe that might be what the doctor ordered for this position. Let's go bishop b7. I'm... I, I don't feel like this is a bad move because at any point my opponent might play a move like knight d2 and kick me away. So I don't feel like this is awkward by any means. Sometimes your piece is on a square like this and if you're not careful, you know, suddenly it's it gets trapped and it's just really, really awkward. I've had bad experiences with, um, you know, pieces like that before. Okay, my opponent plays bishop b5, a sneaky move. He's trying to pile up some pressure on this pawn on e on e5 right so he's trying to take and maybe take this pawn on e5 so let's go e4 i know this blocks my bishop but oftentimes this is not all that uh bad of an idea so i'm going to go ahead with my plan my plan is going to be to potentially try and um use this d5 square and let's start with knight f6 and i'm going to position my queen on e7 this is an important idea. This d5 square is like a pseudo outpost for us to use. Why? Well, if he plays c4 to try and kick us away, 
we have access to the, the b4 square. That's why my opponent plays the move b4 here. Um, okay. I don't think I should capture. Um, I think I should let him capture me because then I could play rook captures. But that being said, if I do capture him, now that I'm thinking about it, I do get the d5 square for myself, which is important. I do have to watch out for this a5 pawn though. You know, he's going to potentially start getting an outside pass pawn in that style of position there. Mm, I could go knight d5 and then maybe capture with my pawn, but I need to be careful that this pawn in e4 doesn't drop off the board as well. Hmm. I need to make a decision. Could go queen e7 as well and kind of just like pass my move. But that feels a little wrong because I know my opponent's probably going to try and capture at some point. Maybe I just capture with the pawn. Um, hmm. I need to make a move. All right. Queen e7. Simple move. Passing kind of the move to my opponent. And let's see what he decides to kind of do. This defends the pawn, which is one of the reasons why I like the move. It develops my queen. And now I can kind of go for this knight d5 idea. I think what, it's, what normally I would like to do is that after pawn takes, I would like to capture with the rook. But I also like the structure the way that it is because this d5 square is a very nice spot for my knight. And it's very hard for him to do anything about the the knight on the square so if i go knight d5 he's going to go queen b3 so maybe hmm okay let's just go knight d5 i don't know why i'm thinking about simple decisions i'm just going to try and maybe shove this f pawn down his throat might not be a bad strategy, actually. Okay, let's preface this idea by going king h8 and getting ready to attack my opponent. Now, something I didn't consider, he could play bishop c4 here. It's kind of a little awkward. I do have some ideas. I could back my knight up. That's one. Not exactly what I wanted, but I could also play c6, but this feels very awkward. I want to keep my knight in the middle of the board. So we'll see. If he captures, I have to capture with the rook now. This is uh, an important move. Okay, he goes for knight c4, hitting my rook. Maybe he wants to try and force through a5 here. Which, now that I'm looking at it, does seem pretty good. But maybe we could stick my rook on a7. Let's try this out. I have an idea of maybe trying to use my rook on the a8 square. You know, creating a pin and trying to just capture this pawn on a5. Yeah, let's go ahead and try this. This is kind of not what I don't, I didn't envision this being the way I want to play here because honestly, I should be trying to play on the king side. Okay, but this is a sneaky idea. It wants to capture like this. Very tricky, very resourceful guy here. Very tricky. That's a very nice move from my opponent. Okay. How can I, in turn, give myself some play here? Takes, takes. The problem is this bishop guards the knight, and I kind of need the the bishop to stay alive here in this position. It's a very important bishop. Could I go bishop c8? Seems really wrong. <laughs> seems really wrong. My position seems like it's a little bit not the greatest, which I don't really get because, you know, my position was really, really nice at one point here. b5, queen takes b5. Hmm, bishop a6 maybe? No, I, he just takes on d5. Man, man, man. Okay, actually, you know what? I just thought of this variation. I can take on c3. 
this is probably just bad. Just takes, I can take on c3 here. Okay, wait, hold on. This is very tactical. This is very important that I get this right because I, I didn't feel like there was anything else I could do in that position besides go for this tactical kind of mess with the knights, you know, taking on a5 and taking on c3. Let's keep thinking about this position. If takes, takes, queen captures, actually that doesn't work because now that I take, he can take this bishop. That doesn't work. If I let him take the bishop on b7, I guess I could take, take, and then take on c3. He would go rook c1, and maybe I go knight d5 back. Yeah, we're going to go for that because really that's my only option here. I don't like the fact that my king is on the h8 square. I think that's a worse square for my king to be on because... Um, Because normally the king would actually be better placed on g8, not getting back rank checkmate. And now it's like everything's a back rank checkmate. Let's go knight d5. I don't really see another option, so I'm just going to play it. My position is probably lost here. My pawn in c7 looks weak. Maybe I can go knight b6 here. Is there a way to... Let's go knight b6. I'm going to go rook a7 to defend this pawn. Rook a7. Also kicking the queen, trying to kick the queen out of my territory. You know what? If I can survive here, maybe my position's not all that bad. For some reason, I feel like I'm losing, but I have an extra pawn. Like, you know, uh, maybe the grand scheme of things, I'm being worried for no reason. But the thing I will say is that I'm losing on the clock pretty badly here. I need to play fast. So we're going to blitz out some next couple of moves here. My queen is guarding the e4 spot. So I think what I'm going to try and do here is play rook a7, kick the queen out of the b7 spot and potentially use, okay, he can maybe take on f7 here. So maybe we should go bishop f6 and king g7. I want to kick the queen out of this position. Okay. I just need to make sure my opponent doesn't have any sneaky ideas. I, I just got to go quick though, guys. I got I got two minutes on the clock. I'm just burning time. I'm going to put my king on g7 to defend this pawn, then try and offer a queen trade to exchange these queens off the board. Okay, bishop g3. That's just an improving move, guys. King g7, another improving move. Maybe I could go for this later on, but currently my goal is to exchange these queens. Time to kick the queen out of this out of the territory here. Shoo. Get out of here. If he exchanges, I'm happy now that my pawn in f7 is defended. This is going to come down to the wire, guys. I'm really low on the clock, though. I need to play quick. Okay, I was going to play queen b5. That's a blunder. Let's go h5. This is a nice improving move. Attacking this bishop and kicking it back to the h2 square. Or... You know, he has to always be careful about his king here. I'm not so worried about my pawn on h5. It's protected. If he plays h4, maybe we start to try and target this h4 pawn. I have nice control over the a file, and currently my pawn on c7 is defended, which is very nice. Let's continue. He's going to try and pile some pressure on it. That's fine. Let's go h4. And... Let's play queen d7. This is just a general improving move. Nothing, I'm not really doing anything with this move besides just trying to defend this pawn again. Just wait. Just waiting for my opponent to kind of declare what he wants to do. Maybe I might go queen f5. Proving my queen again. I would like to stick my knight back on d5. Oh my god, I dropped my pawn. No. <laughs> god. It, this is the problem with playing blitz and... Other stuff is that you just don't play quality chess. You got to be really careful. Chess is not an easy game. Um, let's go rookie eight. Queen might drop on c6 now, guys. Okay, he does. He didn't do it. 
My position feels so bad. Okay, queen f5 here. It's these two bishops that are very, very annoying to my position. Sneaky idea is to maybe try and go g5 here. Need to be careful. Bishop c2 might be a, a sneaky idea in, re, in response. Okay, he does it immediately. Let's go queen d5. Trying to offer a trade. You know, the knight capturing on d5 is nice. Knights are very, very tricky. Maybe I have knight c3, knight e2 there if he's not careful. Um, Maybe I can even, you know, if he goes queen e2, maybe I have rook a2 there to try and start creating some threats. Actually, oh, what, what, what is this? Okay, I have to take. He's going to take an f6. I missed this idea. I might be in huge trouble here. He's attacking h4. h4. Takes here. Hmm. Okay, I just go knight d7 here. And I back my... I back my king up if he takes an h4. Unfortunately, I don't know if that was the best, guys, but... I have 30 seconds. It's kind of depressing because this is a really nice game. Otherwise, I have a really nice position. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it essentially like he played b4 and I thought I was better in that position. And somehow it, you know, my advantage kind of slipped a little bit. Okay, let's not give up just yet. No giving up. Queen f5, knight f6, knight e4, rook h8. All are easy moves to play quickly. Let's go knight f6, knight e4 next. Can maybe try and go on the b file here. Let's go back to d5. Whew. Okay. Rook a2 might be an idea. I gotta be careful, bishop b3, but. Okay, rook a3, I gotta be careful. Might be dropping my c7 pawn. Let's go back to f5. Knight e4 might be an idea, knight d2. I just gotta go quick. I'm gonna lose on time probably. I have 16 seconds and no increment. I probably need to play some increment games, guys. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna see me play some increment chess because this just sometimes doesn't feel fair when the chess is not like up to a quality standard at some point. It just doesn't feel like chess, you know? Okay. I take, I go for knight d2. Uh, it's a tricky variation. Um, takes check. Hmm. Yeah, I just lose on time here, guys. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so 87.8% .8 for my opponent, 86.9. I mean, that's essentially the same. King h8's the mistake here. I I guess that makes sense. King h8's the mistake, takes, and knight c4, and a5. But that being said, let's look at something else I maybe could have played in this position to increase my advantage. Computer likes... I think you should be able to see it. Something like queen e6, queen e6 to um, attack the queen. What if bishop to c4? Kind of hard to understand this one. But yeah, I pin myself, but the knight is extremely hard to actually move unless you attack it. And this is kind of the concept that I was going for. Curious, after queen b3, queen e6, what if white just plays the same idea with knight to c4? Or actually, let's say he takes. Let's say he takes on a5. I have to take with a rook. I'm guessing. Computer's going to be like, no, you play this crazy move. Okay. Then he goes knight c4. I'm guessing rook a7, right? Rook a8. Okay, sure. a5. And what do, what do I do here? What's the recipe here to maybe stop... Um, bishop to a6. Maybe an important resource that I was lacking. Um, apparently there's a crazy knight sacrifice here that he got to find. Let's say if he just takes like a normal human being, 
Um, I just capture with the knight. Okay. This make this starting to make sense, guys. I have this kind of nice little pin here, and my opponent has to be really careful. And a computer is already recommending passive moves to defend the queen on b3. So I think this was the very key moment in which the kind of the initiative, kind of the the evaluation changed big. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, let me know what you want me to play next in the description below, and I will give it a shot. And otherwise, um, have a good one, and I will see you on the next video.